what is going on beautiful people it's your boy blue and welcome back to train sim world 2 uh we're just waiting for our train uh trains rolling up just now uh ready for a crew change we will take control of it here at uh juniata uh loco shops here over by i think it's by um Altoon. We're in Pennsylvania here in the United States. Uh, we'll be driving it down to Johnstown. Uh, we have a, I believe we are expecting 87 total um, cars on this train going south uh, to Johnstown. You can see it's pulling up now. Getting ready to stop. Beautiful Nor uh, Norfolk Southern livery. ES44 AC looks amazing. Like, it really does look good. Wow. Engine 8049 is ready for a crew change. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is the longest train uh, that I could actually find on this DLC, which is about 87 cars long. I uh, wish they could be a bit longer, but you know, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's still, I mean, look at the Molly, though. Know? Looks amazing. Looks great. Waiting a long time for this route here. Uh, we'll be driving this through the horseshoe curve. Absolutely looking forward to that. A beautiful train spotting area. We're gonna have some amazing drive-bys. I, I just can't, I just, yeah. <laughs> Such a beautiful route so far. Uh, and I'm so thankful to finally get a first look at it. Uh, big shout out and thank you to uh, Dovetail Games and Skyhook uh, for providing this copy for me to take a look at. So let's hop inside. And we'll get her ready to go and uh, we'll obviously be enjoying the view so as you can see here this service is the 65 echo linden chicago ethanol train uh we are the in the es44 ac with the norfolk southern livery and we have 87 cars in total uh, i think it's about uh three locals in the front and i believe two locals in the back we'll double check that for a total length of 1.0 miles and we're at 3357 tons so hit begin we are now in the driver's seat. It is my controls. So uh, it's pretty much already set up. Uh, this service starts at 34, so we're almost ready. We'll make sure everything is ready to go. We'll go up here to our air brake system. Click on the one key here. You can see it's all set up to uh, cut out and lead. Lead is good, but we need this to be set to cut in. So I'm going to click here on F3, cut in, and make sure this is set to lead. And we'll hit save on F6, and it will exit that. That's good to go. So our brakes are pretty much ready. We'll insert the reverser. And of course, we have to use the amazing rail driver today. So check it out. We're using the rail driver today. So it is such a game changer, especially when driving with American Freight. So I just, yeah, I, I love it. Looking forward to it. I'm, I'm really excited about this route and hopefully it does not disappoint me. Um, so uh, I'm getting too excited. I'm, I'm brain, brain farting and all that. So we got our, our headlights already on. I can control that here with this switch. But again, they just rolled in and we're doing a quick crew change. So he didn't really completely um, tie, down the, uh, tie down the train. So everything is kind of already ready for us to go. Just kind of double checking uh, the last engineer's work here. So control on, generator field is on, the engine run is on. We'll go back here and make sure the DPU is on, which I don't think is simulated, but we're gonna make sure it's on anyways. There is no alerter that I have found in this train. The GP38 does though. Uh, and over here, we'll go to banking com, make sure that's on. And we'll go ahead and release. Uh, well, actually, we're gonna make sure that the independent brake, which is this one here, make sure the independent brake is set to full and we'll release the automatic brake just like that beautiful i want to paint this thing red i think that'd be pretty sick uh i don't know <laughs> we'll see and we'll put it into forward if we look up here we should see the rear now shows 57 psi we want it to be about 60 uh to get the whole train moving this is the rear there it is 61 62 we are good beautiful let's go ahead and take our eyes forward to a couple honks of the horn <laughs> And bail off and just like that we are rolling just putting in the three it didn't take much I mean honestly we're 3,000 tons to be honest with you that's actually not that heavy uh, yeah we are 87 cars in total here 
Uh, but it's just really not that heavy. We have plenty of power. I feel like our weight to power ratio is pretty good to get us through this whole route. Um, I've, I have driven through the horseshoe curve and through this route a couple times already uh, in testing and uh, it is definitely challenging. Um, it just kind of comes down to the whole freight challenge where it, it <laughs> handling the weight itself and, and keeping the train under control. Going uphill is one thing, you know, trying to just keep the momentum going, keep the speed up so you're not creeping at 15 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, even going into a stall and rolling backwards. Uh, but the hardest part, as always, is going down. Uh, and so we're going to have a lot of that the first half of this route. I believe it's mostly going to be going uphill, so we'll pretty much be uh, throttle eight, just uh, hammering it all the way up the hill, trying to go as fast as we possibly can, and uh, and then we get going down the hill, um, trying to manage the weight, manage the speed, manage the momentum as we go down. It's going to be very, very challenging, but before all that, we get to go through the amazing horseshoe curve. I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to that plane, sp sorry, that train spotting spot, and uh, I think it'd be really cool to visit there in real life, but uh, for now... We'll get moving. Uh, again, I'm really excited about this train and excited about... Uh, it's been a while, man. We've never had a Norfolk Southern, uh, like an official Norfolk Southern train in Train Sim World. We've had CSX. You know, we, we finally got the Union Pacific, so it's been great. I've been loving that. Uh, but we're finally getting the Norfolk Sur Southern. So that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's the first one for Train Sim World. Obviously, it's been on Train Simulator Classic forever, um, but it's good to finally have it on Train Sim World. Uh, so we're, all we need now is BNSF, right? Uh, we don't have a BNSF stuff yet. So we'd love to also see these different uh, companies intermingling and mixing together. You know what I mean? It'd be really nice. But we're rolling out here. Uh, mile, uh, speed limit is 25 miles per hour so far, and uh, we're looking good. So we're just passing through the Altoon area. The Al I think it's called Altoon. Yeah, uh, this little area here. Very cool little small little city here in Pennsylvania. Never been here in real life, but it's pretty cool um, way they've modeled it. Uh, you will notice that the traffic, I believe, is on the wrong side of the road uh, in this early access build. So um, hopefully, actually, maybe it's not. I'm not sure. I think it might be two roads there. I don't know if it's on the right side or not, but I know that in some areas it is on the wrong side, so uh, it's something they're going to have to fix. I don't know if it's, it'll be fixed by the time that this is released publicly, but hopefully it will be. <laughs> uh, I'm really hoping, because honestly, I, I've, I've Cane Creek is as excited as I was about Cane Creek. Um, it it kind of let me down in some areas. It, it, don't get me wrong, it looked beautiful on half the route. Um, but it just had a lot of bugs when it first came out, uh, and then it took them forever to fix the bugs. And so it really kind of came down to the modding community to go through and fix the bugs. Uh, and then later, you know, Skyhook finally came through and fixed them. So I'm hoping that Skyhook will learn not only from their own mistakes, but from Dovetail's mistakes as well on their recent ruse on just having a higher quality of release, right? A higher quality release uh, product as well as a higher return rate or I should, yeah higher fi like return rate on fixing things like yeah, like that hot fix should never take a whole year a hot fix should never take three months a hot fix shouldn't take two weeks um you should be able to dive in there fix a few things you got that's wrong with it and release it so your people can start really enjoying that product so hopefully we'll see that with this one i don't know uh, I don't have any insight on that, but uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, as I kind of mentioned on my pre, I think on the Cane Creek video, uh, I was really excited about that one, and I was hoping that it would be my new favorite freight route. You know, I do love me some freight, some American freight, so I'm really just kind of really, you know, all of us Americans who love American freight and people who are not American that love American freight are really just wanting a really good, authentic freight experience in train sim world too and uh, a lot of the freight routes have been coming out have kind of been missing the mark have been really good but they've also kind of missed the mark here and there uh that kind of breaks that uh, that uh that experience that you're looking for so honestly still clinchfield believe it or not is my it has been and is my favorite freight route but this one has the potential of uh, still in the crown of being my personal favorite freight route 
uh, as we're climbing the hill right now because I feel like from just my time and, and my little time spending in this route, this has a, a modern Clinchfield feel to it. You get what I'm trying to say? Like a modern Clinchfield feel. Like it's it's in the mountains. It's very tight. A lot of uh, you know snaky corners and, and a lot of trees. I feel like again, I think I mentioned this on a, on a, a video or a stream uh, recently that I feel like uh, Train Sim World 2 really uh, just, it really shines when it comes to areas like this where it's, it's a high vegetation, uh, all of the scenery is close to you. It's not super spread out like the, uh, you know, like Half a Cane Creek or like Sherman Hill. Uh, like no, those are great routes, but like because they have like such far out plains, you really can see the lack of uh, level of detail out in the distance and I feel like you really need that on those routes So until they kind of fix that or make it some kind of customized Slider where you can kind of at your own risk be like, all right I want to see scenery all the way to the freaking horizon, you know uh, Some of those routes where it's more flat land are gonna be a more a bit more difficult, you know to to really appreciate but as we come up on this, this rock formation here as we see in front of us one thing that I'm really impressed by with this route is the scenery uh, I feel like with, with Cane Creek, the scenery uh, on, on the, the mountains and the way they modeled it was just so good. <laughs> it was so good. And, and you can see they kind of learn from that. And look at these rock formations on the side of this mountain. They look, it looks so good. It looks so realistic. So well done. I don't know if this cross work, walk or this railroad crossing works. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gotta fix this one. They gotta fix this one. Uh, again, this is a pre-release build. Hopefully, they'll fix all this by release. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not gonna hold my breath, but hopefully, they fix it. All right, Speedman has jumped up, or we slowed down. One or the other. I'm gonna go back to throttle five. That was six. We got a 1.9 percent gradient. We got three uh, yellow ahead of us, which is, I, I guess, it just means go. <laughs> I don't 100 percent understand uh, this railroad's signaling. Um, I've been learning a lot about American freight railroads, and I've been learning a lot about signals, but the thing I've learned as well is the fact that it's not always the same through different railroads or through different companies. For example, what you see on CSX or Union Pacific may not mean the same thing when you're driving on Norfolk. Um, so yeah, if, if you're looking to, to learn more, look at those rocks, they look amazing. If you're looking to learn more about U.S. freight, uh, it's good to just go specifically by, I would call it the carrier, right? Like specifically by the company. So focus on Union Pacific or BNSF or uh, Norfolk Southern. Uh, personally, I think I've been focusing on BNSF, learning their symbols, learning uh, uh, their, their um, destination codes and um, signaling, things like that. We don't have a BNSF route yet on, I don't think, no, we don't have a BN, uh, actual BNSF route just yet on Train Sim World, but uh, I've been trying to learn um, so that when we do get one, you know, hopefully I'll be knowledgeable in that area. So, and we'll go to our uh, map here. We see we're actually already approaching the Horseshoe Curve. It's only about three miles to the south of the starting point, so we get there pretty quickly. You see it snakes around, we'll go through the curve, and then we'll continue on. This is the entire route. The entire route, I believe, is about 40 miles long. And I think if you include the fort down here, it's actually a total of 68, which is the uh, same amount or same distance in total as the Cane Creek uh, subdivision. All right, and here we come around Horseshoe Curve. It's actually really cool what they did with the curve. I mean, they included the uh, the, the visitor center, the the little park on the top, the I think the GP8 or GP9 up there. Uh, it's very cool, and you can walk around all of it. Got the 
Deagle Depot down here with some park benches. Uh, very cool, actually. Nice detail. I love that you can actually... You can't actually walk down here. I'm actually down here with the free camera right now as we're passing by the horseshoe curve. But here's a little... Uh, I don't know what you would call that thing, but I guess it, it'll lift you from the bottom to the top so you don't have to take a million thousand stairs. <laughs> Actually, there are stairs right here. There are the stairs. Uh, but very cool, very beautiful lookout point too, man. It looks really nice. You can just come down here and just kind of like just stargaze at night or look at the clouds, whatever you want you're into. Very cool. Feature see our train is still passing by. I remember 87... 87 uh, car long train one mile long you can also look down here and uh, actually read more things about the curve you can educate yourself about what everything means um, one thing is interesting it has an Amtrak train here so uh, I'm not sure they're trying to give us a hint <laughs> uh, also another thing is this flat car with the uh, with the semis on the back I'm not sure if that's something that could also be added onto this route later on it'd be pretty nice to see and over here you can see we got the GP9 exhibit here kind of like a historic locomo diesel locomotive there i love the addition of the the train spotters here with the cameras the cameras are kind of lopsided right now but uh, that's something else that's going to need to be fixed in the future uh, but still pretty cool uh, to have that it'd be kind of nice to have like a scenario where there's like a ton of people here for like a a really uh you know popular event or something like that but uh every time you come here as well it's always a different model it's not always the same person guy or woman standing here actually doing it also got a circus poster here and uh, again, more information about this is actually a duplicate of the GP9, but very beautiful area. I really do love uh, what they did with it, and it's, it's really nothing like it, man. I mean, there's, there's, it's just one of those places as a rail fan is that if you get an opportunity, you have to visit this place. So beautiful place. It's really a golden moment. I couldn't make it happen today uh, when you see multiple trains crossing here at the same time. And there is actually a scenario for that. But anyways, let's get back to our train and finish our route. All right, so back in the cab of our uh, 4,400 horsepower locomotive here in the ES44 AC. I'm gonna give it a little bit more throttle here using the rail driver down into throttle not seven. We have a 1.8% grade here you can see we're now south of the horseshoe curve uh, we were planning to go all the way down here in total it'll take me about an hour and seven to hour and 15 minutes real time to finish this entire route now uh, these routes are all in real time so it's not like i can speed up time or get there any faster i'll do my best to maintain the speed limit as we go up and down the hill uh, which is not as easy said as it is done <laughs> uh but yeah it's you can see the route just as a whole i mean just kind of really does feel filled in it doesn't feel scarce as you look off in the distance up here i mean you can obviously see uh, a few pop-in trees that's that's not gonna go away but yeah as we kind of carve our way through the mountains i really do like the scenery on this route we have three locomotives in the front and two in the back so we got plenty of power i think to get us up the to get us up the mountain all right right around this corner to our right in less than a mile we'll be coming uh, up to one of the really interesting parts of the route if you look at the map uh, it's called the galinth galitzen galitzny uh, t tunnel and it's actually three tunnels there's a tunnel here a tunnel here and another tunnel uh, entrance way over here on the other side so it's very interesting actually and you know I don't know something about tunnels is really special All right, so now that we're in the tunnel, you know I have to do the tunnel test. So the way I do the tunnel test is, I can't see crap in here, hold on. Is there a light button? There is a light. I open the window. Take a listen to the sound difference. Not much, no, no sound difference at all, really. And we'll honk the horn. And once again, 
the tunnel test has failed. Basically what I'm looking for in the tunnel test is to see if there's any sound difference, you know, from the sound bouncing off the walls of the tunnel. It gives you that, uh, that really interesting, you know, tunnel sound, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? So we're not really getting that. So, I mean, I think the sounds definitely are an upgrade uh, on this train versus um, previous Dovetail or Skyhook uh, trains, but you know, I guess I'm being a little picky there with the tunnel sound, but it is something that I feel like they should definitely look into. All right, coming out of the tunnel now, and again, the scene just, I mean, look, it's looking good as we come out of the Galenzic Tunnel. Oh, something else that I forgot as well is if we go to the pause menu, you can see our, we're actually at the summit. So the summit on this route does come at the Galitzin uh, tunnel right after that. Uh, you'll start going down. So I believe it's going to be downhill from here. So the easy part is over. Uh, as we are coming up on a mini crosswalk, we can honk for that. Uh, 15 miles until we go via South Fork Junction, I believe. And now we have a 1.0% gradient. So that means we need to start, uh, you know, preparing for our descent and managing our power, managing our speed and all that kind of stuff like that. Also get the radio turned on. Uh, this radio doesn't actually work. I just have a, uh, a radio scanner. Uh, I'll be playing in the background, so don't worry. This does not come with an, a working radio if you hear that in the background so uh as we're starting to go down one percent gradient so far i'm not sure how steep it gets but i'm gonna start putting my uh throttle over into the dynamic yeah, position the hump, over. so i think at 1.5 could probably stay there at the moment it looks like it's actually stabilizing there about 29 miles per hour we have a 35 mile per hour section coming up ahead of us which would be very nice to get a bit going a little bit faster we still got a ways to go And it kind of just comes down to just playing with it, man. Um, back when we did Clinchfield, and if you guys saw my Clinchfield video, I really struggled on the brakes. I mean, I thought we, we survived. We didn't die, you know, but we, we didn't do great. Uh, when I look back at that, I was like, man, I could have done better at managing my descent there. Uh, so that's what I'm really trying to do is try to do better because it can get away from you. It really can uh, very easily. So kind of going to use dynamic brake we won't use the automatic brake uh unless we really need to uh, on a 1.0 percent grade at the weight we're at right now the dynamic brake should be more than enough. as you can see when i add the dynamic brake which is very sensitive actually here on the rail driver uh just at 1.2 percent we're already losing uh, actually right at 34 actually if we could stay right here okay so actually it looks like it's kind of I'm watching our HUD here on the right side to see, are we gaining speed or losing speed? It looks like we are actually losing speed here by that yellow bar. Just a tiny bit. So we could probably leave it there for now. Um, but as the gradient goes up and down, we're gonna have to adjust for that. Got a green signal up ahead and 50 miles per hour. What? I like the sound of that. All right, beautiful. The end of the train is now finally past the speed limit sign, and we can now go up to 50 miles per hour. So instead of actually giving it power, I'm just going to take the dynamic power out of it and let us kind of accelerate from our own weight. Uh, but again, we do want to make sure to, again, just control that because you could easily just uh, let that get out of control. So I'm actually going to go back now uh, into the dynamic brake setup, and we'll try 1.0. Uh, because we're going faster, we're going to need more dynamic brake to keep us at a steady speed. And at 2.0, it looks like we are losing. Uh, we'll see. It's still kind of kicking in. It's still picking up. And yeah, now with the engine revving at 2.0, it looks like it's going to... It's, I mean, it doesn't hurt to go about five miles per hour or less or more. Uh, 
You don't have to be right at the speed limit all the time. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you feel safe at. And uh, I would like to get just a little more speed there. If we could do 1.2. I feel like that's where the sweet spot's gonna be, uh, but what I've learned on on these routes is it's, it's sometimes you don't find a sweet spot, and you may have to just kind of like play with it and and finesse it, as some people would say. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, so you may go back to 1.2, jump up to 2.1, go throttle one, throttle three. You know, just kind of because the sweet spot may not, you may not be able to actually get that sweet spot you're looking for. So you guys have to jump between uh, either or. But 45 miles per hour looks good to me. I'm okay with that. And so far, we got everything under control. We have a 1.0% gradient, 11 miles to go to our next go via location at South Fork. Um, that's pretty much, we, I think after that, we still got about five or so miles to go after that. But we'll just be enjoying the view, guys, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the trip so far. Finally, another train. Like, <laughs> I was like just thinking, like, where the heck are all the trains at? There's another ethanol train going the opposite direction. I'm not sure if, how long it is, but it's pretty long from what we can see here. I mean, I was just thinking, I was like, man, like, we've driven over half the route already and we hadn't seen a single train not a ethanol not a manifest not an intermodal like nothing this is the first train i've seen so i don't know if i picked a a bad time as an eltd on the back but uh i'm not sure if we just picked a bad time or, or what but it's just not very busy like i i was trying to say earlier I've, I've done other drives where i did see a uh, quite a lot of traffic so maybe we'll see some more traffic now behind that train or maybe they're all stuck behind a red light somewhere i don't know uh, i'll show you where we are now uh, we're getting closer to south fork uh we're planning on continuing uh west here not south now this part is definitely interesting um you know if you want a challenge matter of fact i dare you <laughs> Uh, to take a fully loaded coal train up and down this section here. Uh, this is like, I think, the most hilly and most, uh, yeah, most mountainous section of the route. Um, this is, I think, about 18 miles or something like that, I think, this part. So I believe this whole thing is about 40 miles, and this little section is about 18 miles, I believe. Uh What you saw there was a mixed freight manifest train with uh, GP38s on either ends. Uh, GP38 is actually pretty fun to drive on this route, to be, to be honest. Uh, GP38 is not anything new to Train Sim World 2. I believe it is actually just a copy of an already existing model with uh, with the new Norfolk livery on it and uh, a new sound pack on it. So they've done they they've, they've definitely touched it. They've added some sounds. They changed the horns uh, and they changed the livery, which actually makes it feel like a completely new train. Um, so it's definitely a lot of fun to drive. So I definitely highly recommend it. It has some pretty fun services to do with some pretty fun scenarios as well. As we make the turn around this curve here, uh, speed limit has dropped now to 40. Even we're still going downhill. I'll put the uh, reverse her back into not reverse it, but I'll put the throttle down into dynamic braking and 1.9, 1.2, 2.0. All that should be good enough. We'll start off at 1.9. So 
We got our speed down. We are now 0 0.8 miles away from the South Fork. Now, uh, we will not be stopping uh, unless traffic gets in our way. We plan to go right through. We do have a yellow signal, so we'll kind of approach at caution here. All right, as you can see, we're pulling through the South Fork uh, Junction. As you can see, it really just kind of cuts off to that section I talked about earlier. And again, I highly recommend going down there once or twice if you can. Here comes another intermodal train on our left. Look at that. Look at that. Pretty cool. And again, I'm not a huge fan of seeing such a high amount of German containers. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, the majority of them are German containers. And then you see the, the kind of the non-branded, the blue, solid blue, the solid black, uh, solid white, solid pink, or salmon, whatever you want to call that. Uh, there is a mod on the previous routes uh, that actually changes and swaps out all the pink containers uh, and some of the German containers with some uh, some more real-to-life uh, containers, which makes it honestly a bit more enjoyable to drive. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I chose not to drive the intermodal service because I just didn't really like uh, the containers. To be honest with you, I feel like they they use, I don't know what they used to use back in the day. Uh, for like San Patrick Raid before they added the one um, But I don't know it's something I used to like it more than I do now now in real life We do have the pink one containers, you know I used to kind of be like ah, that's not realistic to see those in the US, but they, it is it is that it is actually really realistic um, I live out here in Texas actually and uh, it's mainly Union Pacific Dominated and I do see one containers. It's just uh, the frequency of them is not as high as what we're seeing on in the sim um, so uh, the mod that I'm sure will probably cross over to this as well after release um, It kind of lowers that frequency of the one con containers You know, I really like this route <laughs> I really do and I'm not just saying that 3.9 miles to go to Johnstown and I have honestly enjoyed every bit of this uh, I think it's just a scenery man uh, again the, the train itself the locomotive looks amazing, in my opinion. I think it looks great. The molly looks good. The texturing, very well done. It's pretty clean. Uh, I would like a, a dirtier version, uh, just slightly dirtier. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't bother me where the state that it's in right now. Matter of fact, we haven't had the number lights on all day long. Uh, I think they're up here somewhere. I can't remember where they are. Yeah, there's number lights. And our cab light is still on. We can turn that off now. There we go. But uh, yeah, the local looks great. Uh, honestly, I do enjoy the services they have. Uh, pulling the ethanol trains here, the tank cars. Uh, the intermodal service is pretty fun. The manifest trains, the, the coal trains, loading and unloading coal. Uh, a lot of fun to do as well. I, re I really, really enjoy that actually. Uh, GP38 is actually a lot of fun to drive, surprisingly. And. Um, the sounds are pretty solid. I mean, I think they could be better. Uh, they definitely have have done better with <laughs> the sounds than in the past, uh, but they could still be improved on. And I think again, it's probably going to be a mod or two uh, to help with that. But uh, I don't hate where it's at right now. I really don't. Um, I think this route is going to be a route that I'm really going to enjoy driving for for a while. I'm, I've, again, like I said, I've driven some a little bit before, and uh, I could see myself driving this back and forth, uh, even doing some some custom scenarios and taking maybe I don't know that Union. I think Union Pacific does drive in the area, probably not on this specific railroad, but in the in the region, I believe Union Pacific does drive out here. Maybe CSX as well. So, wouldn't hate to see some of those other companies driving in this uh, region would be kind of cool to do just for fun look at that grass on the railroad down there that's pretty cool that's really cool actually uh, looking forward to this kind of uh, one thing it kind of 
makes us uh, a route even uh you know, replayable, I should say. That's kind of how I judge most the routes that I, I drive on. Is like, is this replayable? Am I just gonna drive this, make a video, and then forget about it? Or am I gonna go back and drive it over and over and over again? Like, again, I keep comparing it to Clinchfield because, again, Clinchfield's my favorite. I think the thing about Clinchfield that made me enjoy it so much well, it's not so much to train because I really wasn't that interested in the in the F40. I really wasn't like it's like my my least favorite part about the clinch field. Uh, number one, I love the route itself. It's gorgeous. It's it's beautiful. I love how the tight turns and just all the gradients and how challenging that is. I love all the different stations where you can actually load and unload unload coal. Uh, I do love the the clinch field. Uh, what do you call them? The the hoppers, I guess they're called. Um, I love that. Um, I also love the 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 service mode though, like the um, the journeys and the I guess you can, I call it like career mode, but like the way that when you go through the journey mode and every journey ends at the beginning of the next journey. So if you play through an entire journey in the journey mode. Uh, it just continues and continues and continues so you can basically like kind of save your progress come back and continue it So I would try to go through there and finish the entire journey now. I sadly in this In this one in in, in, in this game or in this DLC. They didn't really set it up that way um, They do still have some fun scenarios and some fun uh, journeys and things like that, but it doesn't necessarily beginning end together you kind of you can go through the timetable and do that same kind of concept uh, like for example, I believe this actually I don't think this one continues on because this actually goes all the way to Chicago But uh, some of them do actually continue from the next one and that's something I like is that pro progressiveness right there um, Being able to kind of have a, a sense of completion a sense of progress uh, like for example being able to load up coal cars and then the next scenario the next um, timetable uh, service is you taking those loaded coal cars and taking them to somewhere else and then you take them from there and you continue there it's kind of like you're completing a whole day in life kind of cycle you know um, and I like that kind of stuff when it comes to freight in specific because it's not like passenger where you're going you're dropping off passengers and you go to the end and you turn around and do it again like freight trains are out there working man like they're doing local services they're picking up empty cars and going to take them somewhere else to get loaded or to get them sent off to some far destination you know like, there's always something going on um, and the, the freight is a reason why freight is so busy and being able to bring in that business aspect of it that kind of, it would definitely adds a lot for me personally and so with this one with the, with, uh, with the horseshoe curve I don't know if they've done that completely but there's definitely some potential in there and I gotta go looking more into the journeys and the services and all that kind of stuff to find out what all they have to offer but I do see this being replayable uh, I want to see you know kind of how challenging it gets in the rain going through the same gradients how challenging it gets through the snow um, I would have to say this is not as difficult when it comes to gradients as Clinchfield I think that was much harder I think Sherman Hill is a bit more difficult as well um, because you're a, you're a longer train and those gradients can really catch you on that summit on the Sherman Hill summit so uh, when it comes to difficulty, I don't think this is very difficult. As you can see, I'm managing my speed pretty well, pretty easily, actually. I thought it'd be more difficult. The more difficult one is that other one over by South Fork. This section over here is a more difficult part. Um, but this full mainline section is not that bad. So we're a little bit fast. We're all, less than two miles away now. And I'm just kind of managing with the dynamic brake. We're a little fast, you know. It's a couple, a couple miles an hour. And I'm kind of not paying attention because I'm talking, but I think we will be okay. Alright, so we just crossed the yellow signal. Our next signal is a red. It is 1.6 miles out. And that'll be our final stop in Johnstown after we hit the corner. I'll tell you guys, like, being able to run American Freight on Train Sim World 2 with a rail driver is, as I mentioned earlier, a game changer. I It makes things so much more enjoyable. All right, here we go. We need to get, I'm going to go, I'm going to start off the dynamic brake. We're going to go full. 
8.0 on the dynamic brake as we are 400 yards away. 3,000 tons behind us. We're going to bring in the automatic brake at around 54% and see how that does for us. We're 500 yards from the red signal. We are slowing. We're not going to go a 90% now. I don't want to stop short. So bringing that dynamic brake off. We'll just let the brakes do their thing and it's like we are going to end up stopping short. Yeah. Uh, one little trick that I tend to do is just try to go full throttle. I don't think we're going to make it. Nope. Didn't think so. <laughs> Crap. Because once you set your brakes, like, you can't just, like, take brake out, put brake in, take brake out, put brake in. That's not how, that's not how freight brakes work. Uh, once you set your brakes at a percentage, like, it's, it's set there for a while. So it's better to just put some throttle in and fight your own brakes, as you see me doing now. Throttle 7, fight our own brakes, than to wait for the brakes to release, because the brakes are not just on this locomotive, it's shooting all the way down to the back of the train. So I'm gonna give it some power and dump the power, leave the brakes on, and it should come to a complete stop. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, we made it. <laughs> we survived. Love it, love it, love it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we survived the horseshoe curve and again, I think this is totally replayable. I, I'm definitely looking forward to driving more up and down with different types of freight, different types of conditions, seasons, things like that. Um, really looking forward to seeing you guys play it as well and see what you guys think. I don't know why we didn't get a medal. Uh, it says total score 5300, but yeah, I have not run this before. So I should have got, yeah, I thought we did freaking amazing. So I don't know why <laughs> um, that happened. But yeah, loving it. Uh, great job by Skyhook. Um, it definitely can be improved. There's definitely some bugs I've found, some cross uh, railroad crossings that are not working. Uh, there's many things um, that, that need to be fixed and hopefully fixed fast. Uh, don't make the community wait again forever to get basic things fixed. Um, come on. We got to make a better reputation for you guys. But uh, loving this train. Looking forward to driving it more often. And hopefully you guys enjoy watching. Until next time. Remember you got three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. I'm out.